Yeah, you know, it's always great to uh, be able to get a first victory, um, especially here at home in the shell uh, in front of our fans. I'm pleased with the way we were able to do some things today on offense, defense, special teams. But obviously, uh, game one, there's a lot of things we still got to get corrected, as I expect us to. I was proud of the way that our defense played. Um, I thought those guys did a, a pretty good job of uh, keeping them out of the end zone. Um, there was plenty of things that we can still get cleaned up. And like I said, uh, usually you see a, a, a big, your biggest jump as a, a team is from week one to week two. Um, it's kind of been the history. And so I expect us to really kind of get some of this stuff cleaned up. Um, it's always better to be able to do it after a victory, which we're really fortunate to have uh, gotten it done here in the shell today. Um, you saw some explosive plays out of the running back room. Uh, Roman Hemby had a big game for us. Would have loved to see a few more opportunities. You know, when you look at us on offense, our goal is to try to get 80 plays, and I think we had 59 opportunities today. And, uh, the only way you get to that 80 is to be good on third down, and I think we were 4 of 13 today on third down. And that's what allows you to, to be able to sustain drives, allows you to get more opportunities, especially with the type of playmakers we have on the offensive side of the ball. So, again, uh, proud of the way the guys fought through today. Uh, you know, I thought our conditioning level showed up really well today. We didn't have a lot of guys out with cramps, so uh, they've done a good job to put themselves in position to play four quarters. But we'll get in here tomorrow as a staff to you know, get this game behind us, uh, start preparing for Charlotte, and uh, start work on Monday. So with that, I'll open up the four questions. I'm Wayne Viner from Viner Four Gates. We make your company work. I'm Arthur Smith with Viner Four Gates. Two-factor authentication is a must-have in today's world. Security training for your company is a must. The crooks are getting smarter. We have to give you the edge to fight back. Hi, I'm Maryland wide receiver Rakim Jarrett. If you've been hurt in a car crash, people will tell you you need a lawyer. My mom says you need my lawyer, the Jack Litch Law Group. At 855-BIG-DOG-1. Don't just get a lawyer. Get, get the, the lawyers. lawyers. If you're hurt, listen to my mom and bite back with the big dogs. Mike, the running game's like a cake. Uh, what, were, what ingredients do you feel really cooking? This Again, I thought, you know, we showed good depth there, you know, with Kobe coming in. Uh, Antoine had some big runs there and showed his power and showed the kind of change up he allows us to have. I thought Roman, you know, showed exactly why we, we named him our starter. The ability to hit the home run and the consistency he plays with. Was also happy to get the young running back, Ron Brown, in there early uh, to get some quality minutes. Um, you know, the thing that probably disappointed me was the third and one and fourth and one opportunities we had before the uh, end of the half. Um, and for us trying to establish the run, you know, we finished with about 5.7 yards per carry, but a bunch of it came on the explosive run. Just to see a little more just consistency. Um, when I look at it, you know, before I watched the tape, if, if something had jumped out to me, uh, we got to play with a little better leverage, especially in those short yardage situations. And so, uh, Really happy that you know we were able to do some some things in the run game, but definitely still a far a, a long way to go in terms of the the execution. Coach, a uh, couple of inaccurate moments from Talia. What did you see that contributed to that? Yeah, again, you know, before you have opportunity to watch the tape, it's, it's tough. I know we had a chance to hit a big post there in the first half. And I think he got hit as he was releasing the ball is what I think, um, which is why, because normally uh, he doesn't underthrow very many of his deep balls. Um, you know, it's just game one timing, um, you know, being in a, a, a live game situation, um, I expect him to continue to, to get better like everybody else from game one to game two. Um, I thought he managed things really well for us for the most part. You know, I need to get that, that the interception back there where, you know, they disguised their coverage. He thought they uh, opened the middle of the field up and they did a really good job on his disguise. And what we talked about is he's got to confirm the coverage and not just pre-snap, make a decision. And But those are all things that are correctable and we'll get those things corrected this week. Coach, just how gratifying was it to see Dante Demas out on the field again in a game and, and I guess Jay Sean as well, knowing what they went through last year? Yeah, always good, as I said, to have Dante out there, one, because of the leadership he provides, but two, just knowing how hard he's worked to get back to this point. 
Um, you know, we still are managing the loads of those guys, both he and Jay Sean. Uh, we still have to manage their load and make sure that uh, we are working them back to where they can be, you know, fully loaded up. But you know, I thought we played about 50 to 60 percent of the, the plays they normally would get. And so it was good to see him make a few plays and get his feet wet, as well as the timing back with, with Talia. But uh, having both he and Jay Sean back and making plays for us uh, is huge for us. You mentioned the, the defense and, and having some of those guys who are stepping into larger roles this year. What, what were you most impressed by with how they just handled being in a game situation? You know, I think the big one is, you know, the, having the ability to rotate, you know, six interior guys. I mean, we played a lot of interior players with Mo, Ami, Tommy came to Sote, uh, the, the addition of Henry Trebuzzi coming in, Tank Booker got a bunch of plays for us, Ike Bunyan. So, having created depth there is what, what's going to help us in the long run. And, and all those guys, you know, did a really good job interior, uh, just attacking blocks and getting off blocks. You know, if there's a thing that kind of just watching it from the sideline, you know, we had a few pass interference calls, which are competitive penalties. But, you know, for me, it's a technique thing where we've got to get our head around and, and try to, you know, feel the defender and not run through the middle of their chest. And those are technical things. And that's why I said, you know, we get those things fixed. I think we'll be able to limit some of the penalties we had. Talk about the defensive line and the disruptive data there. I think the big thing is they push that pocket back into the lap of the quarterback. And, uh, you know, a, a lot of the pass rush today came from the interior guys with pushing that pocket back to where they flush the guy out. And it goes back to, like I said, being able to play a lot of players, which allows us to stay fresh, especially a game like today. You know, I thought our conditioning level really showed up in terms of our players. Uh, we didn't have a lot of guys laying on the ground, didn't have a lot of guys cramping. Um, and so our strength and conditioning staff, as well as the sports science people, really did a great job this summer uh, of our conditioning level, which is always key. Um, and then the fact that we created some depth where we rotate and play a lot of these players, and we were able to get some first-time players today, uh, some meaningful snaps, which will help us in the long run. All right, Coach, how, do you, how would you evaluate the overall performance from the special teams today? Um, we had two penalties on special teams, and you know, our, our snappers, the short snapper on the extra point kind of double snapped it, and then, you know, we, we had the, the, the offsides on defense or on the, the field goal block unit. Um, those things are the ones that kind of, those are non-competitive penalties. Those are things we can control. Um, so those were disappointing, but, you know, to see the kick return by Octavian uh, Smith, who, you know, has big playability and, and they're at the end, you know, our kicker being able to kick the ball out of the end zone. I know he had one where he kicked it uh, out of out of bounds, which he overkicked that thing. But to have the, the consistency that we saw out of our kicker today was something that uh, you know will benefit us. And, and we're really glad to have Chad Ryland here, but also you know some of the skill guys that now can contribute in the return game and Tarheeb with the big punt return as well, giving us great field position. Hey, Alex, how's it going? Alex, what's up? Not too much. Um, you, you know, there's been so much talk about Talia and the receivers for the last year. Um, and I know you said there's some things you want everybody to clean up and those guys come get back in the lineup healthy and all that. Um, but but to see what you saw from the running game today and the defense, specifically the pass rush and the rush defense, I mean, uh, how encouraging is that to you for kind of where this team's at and where you see them going in the next few weeks? It was really encouraging uh, because as I've talked about, you know, everybody knows what, what the passing game has been around here. Um, and again, you know, we have to be able to have the complementary things that we don't do well. And, you know, when you, you achieve what you emphasize. And we put a big emphasis on our ability to run the football. As I said, we didn't have the opportunities today. You know, you look and see Roman had seven carries and Antoine had six. And in a perfect world, Roman needs 20 and Antoine needs, Antoine needs about 10 to 15. And, the only way you can get that is by being good on third down. And I'm going to keep harping that we've got to become better situational football. Uh, we've got to keep out of the third and long and extra longs and keep them in the manageable uh, situations where we're able to sustain drives because with the type of playmakers we have, we have to have more opportunities and you either have to play faster or you've got to uh, consistently be able to execute on third down and sustain drives. Coach, you know, you said it's only week one, but, you know, penalties and discipline is always you know, such a big emphasis. What did you see today and kind of how do you go about cleaning that up moving forward? I mean, I think we had nine penalties today. I just described two of them in terms of the, you know, non-competitive type penalties. Uh, the, the 
the, the illegal snap, the offsides on defense. You know, we had two holding calls on the outside zone. Mm -hmm. Those are competitive penalties. We had the four PIs. They're competitive, but now the thing that jumps out when you have competitive penalties is if they're root, if they're repeat penalties, meaning that we keep having PIs, then we've got to correct some things technically. And as I talked about, you know, the big thing with the corners is playing through the man by getting your head around. Too many times we're running down the chest of the guy with our hands in the air. We gotta get our head around, play through the hands. And I think Jacorian executed it the way we want it done uh, two or three times a day. A couple of the young corners uh, didn't didn't play it the way that we teach it. So that's something that we'll make a, a big point of emphasis for our corners uh, going into this week to try to get those type of things corrected. After two or three more, we're gonna stay in the second row to the left. Coach, you talked about Talia being able to keep his composure and not let one mistake can come to. How do you think he responded after that first interception today? You know, I thought he did exactly what we want him to do. Um, typically, you see the shoulder drop. You see the air come out of his body. Uh, he came to the side. I'm obviously disappointed, but uh, for me, the self-correction, uh, he knew right away. He said, I thought they were open in the middle of the field up, and he came back through the middle. I got to confirm it post-snap. And those are the right kind of answers. So um, I was glad to see him. Uh, continue to take strides as, of being emotionally more mature. Um, you know, it's game one. We'll continue to, to clean up the things around him as well as some of the things uh, with his game. And uh, like I said, hopefully we'll be able to see a big jump in terms of the penalties going down from week one to week two and see us execute a little better in situational football. Hey, Coach, uh, your team held Buffalo to just uh, five third down conversions. What allowed your defense to be uh, so good on, on uh, third downs today? Much like what we weren't good at on offense is uh, putting them in third and seven plus. You know, typically if you're a third and seven plus, uh, your odds of converting those are not very high. I thought our defense did a good job on first and second down and putting them in third and long and extra long, which allows them to kind of, you know, either rush the pass or drop eight, which we did some today. And, and that's the area for us on offense where we got to do a better job of being better on first and second down. But I thought defensively, uh, we kept them in the third and seven plus situations, and that's usually a, an advantage for us. And last question for the girl to uh, Coach, you mentioned Jacorian. He had a career high five pass breakups today. Just what did you see him do well, and how important is he going to be to your defense going forward? Yeah, one of those needs to be an interception for a touchdown. Mm -hmm. To me, that was a big point of emphasis. You know, Jacorian's one of those guys that had a draftable grade to leave and probably would have got drafted this this year. And the reason he came back and used the COVID year is to improve his stock from that standpoint. And one of the areas is he he's had a lot of pass breakups, but we need to see him uh, create turnovers. And he had a couple of opportunities, at least early in the first half. I know there was the one dropped interception that would have been a huge, huge play for us. But when you watch, again, as I talked about how we need to play technically out on the perimeter uh, against the ball in the air, he uh, had three textbook coverage technical things that, that I saw at the end where he played through the ball, through the hand, got his head around and, and made plays for us. So, um, you know, he, he had a good game, a big game for us to have five pass breakups. But I know for him and for us, uh, getting those interceptions are going to be really important as we move forward.